Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking onto this video. And please don't forget to subscribe before you leave. Okay, so with all the drama going on in the beauty community, I am absolutely sick of it. That's not what we're here for. So I wanted to switch gears and take it right on back to makeup. So that's what we're gonna do. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about my five best and five worst palettes of all time. We're just gonna jump right into it. Okay, so. I don't know if you guys could tell, just scroll through my videos and you'll know, but my number one, I think my number one favorite palette of all time has to be the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Blood Sugar Palette. So this palette is $52 US and $70 Canadian. It contains 18 shades of matte metallic and pressed glitter finishes. It's about 1.5 grams per shadow, making it $2.89 US and $3.89 Canadian per shadow. So my thoughts on the palette. First of all, it is a formula that is untouchable. I've never worked with anything that's like this. Anytime I use it, I'm obsessed with my eye looks. I actually used it today. I did a really simple look today, but I adore the way the mattes blend out. They're perfectly pigmented enough for that it's not too much, but not too little. I think he just hit a home run with this palette specifically. I adore it. Um, if you're ever wanting to give it a try, if you've ever been curious about it, I highly suggest you give it a go because it is so beautiful. Like honestly, I've anytime I've reached for it, those sunsetty looks, like the reds are so pigmented and they don't have a ton of fallout and they don't patch up on you or anything like that. Just such a great palette. Okay, so up next is one of my absolute favorite go-tos for my golds, and that's the Natasha Denona Gold Palette. And this retails for $129 US and $162 Canadian, yikes. It has 15 shades of matte metallic sparkling and duochrome finishes. Each shade is about 2.5 grams per shadow, making each one $8.69 US and $10.89 Canadian per shadow. So that is a lot, but you do get a good amount of uh, quantity there. The packaging, I adore it. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I love the gold shininess to it. One thing I did not like and that I ripped right out, mine is used to death, so I do apologize. Uh, one thing I did not like is that it comes with like one of those inserts that has all the names on it and I absolutely hated that or ripped it or cut it right out. I can't have that in my way. It's like super annoying. But other than that, I adore this palette. I can't understand the price point. I do think it's priced wildly unfair, but I can understand like for some of them, it's like a very unique formula. Those dual chromes, those sparkle ones are different than what I've seen before in my other palettes. But again, I don't think the quality is that much to justify the huge price point. I'm happy I gave the gave it a try. I never tried with the minis because I heard so many mixed reviews about the minis. So I am happy I gave Natasha Denona a try. I do think it's overpriced, but I am super, super happy that it's in my collection. I love the tones. It's so like, it has like this deep, rusty, I don't know, there's something to it that's just absolutely so beautiful. I reach for it all the time, and yeah, it's one of my number one palettes. Okay, so next up is one of my absolute faves, obviously, if it's on the top five, and that is the Tarte Cosmetics Tartlet Toasted Palette. It has 12 shades, it has both matte and shimmer finishes, and it is $49 Canadian and $39 US, which averages $4 Canadian per shade and $3.25 US per shade. Things I love about it, cute, sturdy packaging, super travel friendly because it's like super hard. You don't have to worry about your shadows shattering or moving around or anything weird like that. Love that. Um, the browns in here are my ultimate, ultimate go-tos when I'm doing a predominantly brown look or when I want like a brown in general. I just love the quality of the shadows here. They blend perfectly. I find that, I don't know if it's because I'm heavy handed or not super duper experienced, but when I go in with dark shadows, it's way harder for me to blend them out. So these ones, for whatever reason, are just not hard to blend out. It's like I'm using a mid-tone colored shadow they blend perfectly. So another thing to note about this palette is I don't love the shimmers, but I love the matte. So I never ever reach for the shimmers. The shimmers are kind of like flaky and like very textured looking on my eyelids. So I, that's not necessarily what I reach for, but the mattes I adore. I love the color range. It's just these warm, 
browns that just complement my eye and my skin tone so well. So if you are ever wanting to try Tarte shadows, I highly suggest you give the Toasted palette a try. I think you'll be really happy with it and it's a great place to start with Tarte in my opinion. Okay, so on to the next palette. When I want to do a peachy look, the number one palette I go for is my Too Faced Just Peachy Velvet Matte Eyeshadow Palette, which retails for $45 US and $55 Canadian. It has 12 shades and the shades are 1.25 grams per shadow, making it $4.58 Canadian per shadow and $3.75 US per shadow. They are a little powdery compared to the other palettes that I'm talking about in this video, but I truly love the tones in here. I don't know what it is, I don't know why, I just feel like peach is one of those colors that just flatters absolutely everybody's skin tone. And this is something that I love for when I'm doing like more natural looks, when I just want to throw something into my crease and out the door. I absolutely love it. I love that it has a bright pop of peach the way it does here so you can like really spice up your looks with it. I love the packaging. I think it's super sturdy, great to travel with, very similar to the Tarte packaging. So love that. Uh, my shadows have never broken. I've, I've traveled a ton of places with it. Something to note though is that there are no shimmers in the palette. So you're if you're into just doing matte looks, then it's great to travel with. But if you're not, then it wouldn't be something I would reach for. And I know a lot of people like to add shimmers into their look. So it is an older palette, but I still find myself constantly Constantly reaching for it. It's definitely one of my favorites and I definitely suggest you give it a try if you wanted a peachy toned palette. On to my last of the five favorites would be the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette and this guy retails for $42 US and $55 Canadian. There are 14 shades and each shade is 0.7 grams per shadow which averages $3 per shade US and $3.92 per shade Canadian. So I think the packaging is decent. I don't love the soft velvet touch packaging. I think it gets pretty dirty. This one isn't wildly dirty because I don't reach for it very often. I'm not a huge fan of Anastasia mattes. I know I'm the only dinosaur that isn't, but I'm just not. I, I find that they're really hard to blend out for me. It could be because I'm heavy handed. I'm not quite sure, but not something I reach for for the mattes, but the shimmers in here are absolutely beautiful. This one, as you can tell, it has been very well loved. I think it's a little weird that it's 0.74 grams per shadow. That's a really little amount compared to all the other palettes I talk about today. So that's something to note if you wanna talk about the value for your dollar and you wanna keep that in mind when you do purchase your palettes. But again, it's definitely one of my favorites. I reach for it all the time. Definitely look into this guy. If you're on the market for Anastasia Beverly Hills shadows and you've always wanted to give them a try, this or Modern Renaissance is a great place to start. All right guys, now on to my five worst palettes. So some of these palettes I don't actually have right now because I've returned them. So I have at one point owned all the palettes that I'm going to be talking about. And if any of the palettes that I'm about to talk about are some of your favorites or some of your go-tos, Everyone has a difference of opinion, and these are just ones that specifically did not work for me. On to the first one is Anastasia Beverly Hills, the Norvina palette. So this is the exact same pricing and packaging as the Soft Glam palette that I just spoke about. I absolutely was so, so disappointed with this palette. I hate returning palettes. Uh, it kills me a little bit on the inside. So to return this one that I was so looking forward to, when I saw that the packaging was purple, like my heart was beating out of my chest. Like I absolutely love purple shadows. I, I think it's because when I was younger, the first shade that I played with when I was a little kid was purple. I used to smear, there was these L'Oreal liquid shadows. I used to put this bright purple on my eye and I absolutely love it. But when I saw that Anastasia Beverly Hills was coming out with a purple palette, I was beyond excited. Now, like I mentioned, their mattes are not my favorite but I love their shimmers so to have some of those shimmers being purple in my collection oh I was so excited but my goodness I was so disappointed when I brought this home I opened it I was so excited I sat down to play with it the amount of fallout now I don't know if there was some production issue the shadows were extremely powdery like I dipped into it I wish I took a picture so that I could insert it here but I dipped into it and literally my white desk was covered in shadow all into the other shadow pans just the absolute worst the shimmers were very very flaky very chunky I absolutely like none of the other Anastasia palettes I own returned it right away 
do not suggest that palette was so disappointed can't get over how disappointed i was one of my absolute least favorite shadows i ever tried was definitely the anastasia beverly hills Morgina palette on to the next so again i don't have this one here because it got returned right away and that is the huda beauty the new nude eyeshadow palette this guy averages for 85 dollars canadian and 65 dollars us i absolutely hated every aspect of this palette so when they said new nudes i was expecting nudes what i got was a bunch of purpley mauve mauve whatever still can't say it palettes it was very not the color scheme i was thinking it was going to be did not like the quality of the shadows could not for the life of me understand the price point i wanted to give huda beauty a try so badly i just literally cannot stand it like that there's a shade in there called a concealer or i don't conceal shade and you're supposed to use that to lay down your concealer. It's a very, very transparent, barely covered, like when you would want to carve it out, barely covered. And then all the other shadows that like there would be, there was a good amount of kick up too. And all of that kick up would fall into that conceal shade. It was just ridiculous. Hated the glitter, the pressed glitters, but like so gross. Absolutely did not like them. I don't see why you would waste two solid shades of that pressed glitter, like in the, the gel, like ugh. just did not like that at all. Went right back to the store. Highly don't suggest that palette. And again, if that's one of your favorites, I'm sorry, but I don't see how. All right, and on to the next, and this guy I have because this was actually sent to me from Sephora. This is the Sephora Collection Sephora Pro Smoky Jewels Palette, and this guy averages for $85 Canadian and $65 US. This is the absolute first and last time I will ever use Sephora Pro Shadows. I very, very much did not like the quality of these. I think it's a ripoff at $85. Not sure why anyone would even consider it because okay like the pan sizes are decent i get it the pan sizes are decent there's just no quality here like i don't understand why they would charge 85 dollars for this like it's like they're trying to rip people off or something i don't know it's very large so like for traveling with this it's large and heavy and i usually like heavy packaging because it feels very luxe but this is just like oppressive it, it feels cheap like it feels plasticky why am i paying 85 dollars canadian for this this is ridiculous there's a lot of kick up when you dig into this and it like they just literally blend away into nothing definitely don't like these i don't know if all the other sephora pro palettes are like this but this one is definitely not one of my favorites don't suggest you guys give this one a try and on to the next okay guys so this one this one holds a special place in my heart of disappointments because it was the first time i ever purchased a palette from sephora i was so excited it was my first extravagant purchase from sephora and this guy has 14 shades there's one gram per shade it's 58 dollars canadian and 49 dollars us there is absolutely hello pigment pigment are you there no 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 there's no pigment in this this can be used as a doorstop this was my first time i wanted to start delving into shadows i'm here all bushy-tailed and bright-eyed and ready to do it and this was just not it this is just not it, sis. Like, no. Um, it's completely pigmentless. It's like the amount of powderiness, it, like literally for having no pigment, like you'd think like, why are you blending into nothing? Like it just literally blends into nothing, nothing. It's, it's like you've not put anything on your eye. I was not as well versed on the return policies at Sephora as I am now. So I, unfortunately, this has been at the bottom of my drawer for so long. I barely want to even give this to my daughter to use as one of her like play things. <laughs> really, really don't like this shadow. It completely scarred me from trying anything from Smashbox in terms of shadows again. I really like kind of scarred me from the brand in general. I'm thinking if they can put out something this crap, then maybe their other stuff is not worth trying either. So this guy was super, super, super disappointing. So the next one that I want to talk about, now I want to preface this by saying I am a giant Kylie Cosmetics fan. And proof of that, I will insert right here. I own a ton of her products from her highlights to her, all, like I'm going to say over 40 lip kits. Own a ton of her stuff, love it. Something that completely threw me off of the brand 
was her shadows. So this is the Kylie Cosmetics, the Holiday 2016 palette. This has nine shades. It retails for a whopping $42 US and $56.58 Canadian, which is wildly overpriced. So this was sold exclusively at KylieCosmetics.com and I think it was a holiday edition palette. So it's definitely no longer available. Thank God, because honestly guys, this is the definition of a ripoff. First of all, the quality of these shadows is absolutely abysmal. Like so much that I never, ever, ever tried another shadow palette from Kylie Cosmetics again. And I'm a stan of her brand. So this was extremely overpriced. This was the like right next to the Smashbox in terms of quality. Super, super powdery, no pigment. And these dark colors barely blended out, barely had any pigment. You would have to pack it on over and over and over and then it would be patchy, just bleh. And like I said, I am a giant Kylie Cosmetics fan, so it pained me to have to throw this in the absolute bottom of my drawer. I'm even wearing one of her lippies today. Like, I love, love, love some of her products. The shadows, it ain't it. Hate them absolutely don't recommend them and from every review i've seen since of all the other palettes and all the other collections she came out pretty consistently people do not like her shadows i i think that it's just a money grab to be honest and i really think that that's unfair because she has enough money right i don't know anyways guys that's it for my favorite and least favorite palettes i really hope you like this kind of video i love doing this style i'm thinking about doing a one of my top five bottom five highlighters so yeah if you want to see that definitely let me know leave me a comment down below i love hearing from you guys and please don't forget to subscribe it really helps me out when you guys subscribe and yeah guys thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you on the next one bye